what was happening in the audition. It was just screaming girls and, and just they threw us right in there. And so even months later after doing this series, we had no idea where it was going or anything. And I was training Kung Fu at the time and I was obsessed. And I went to Chinatown in Toronto to buy some Kung Fu stuff. And I went into the <laughs> store and uh, the entire store was Sailor Moon. And I, I basically just bought every single Sailor Mars doll, knapsack, <laughs> and then I went up to the, to the guy working there and I said, I'm Sailor Mars. <laughs> and he looked at me and he went, okay. <laughs> but that's what I knew. I was like, well, if, if this, this has got to be something, if I've just spent $5,000 on Ray merchandise. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> so another question. Um, if you read the manga, um, if, if like you saw your character that you were doing, did that help you um, do the voice? I I didn't personally, and then I, I won't just make it the Katie Griffin show here. But I, I we didn't know anything about the manga um, until recently. To be honest with you, Susan and I were at something in Vancouver uh, a couple years ago. Yeah, three years ago, yeah. and that's that was our first introduction. We had no idea. The thing so, is, no. Yeah, the thing is that they didn't they didn't give us anything. They didn't they you know it was all new, right, in North America. So it wasn't like everybody was going, yes, this is coming. I mean, there was some. There was a very few tiny pe amount of people going, yes, I've heard about this in Japan, and like it was suddenly in North America, and there it is. And when we were doing the show, they didn't even give us scripts. Now, I know that sounds very strange, but doing, doing Sailor Moon was kind of like doing karaoke. It was almost <laughs> exactly like doing karaoke, actually. You're sort of going along to the bouncing ball, and you're saying the words. And when your words came up, you said the words. So, you, you know, you would say your line, say, it's, oh, oh, Darian, I love you so much. <laughs> and then that would be it. And then, you know, uh, maybe I wouldn't be in the scene for another four scenes. And then the next scene would be, be me going, <laughs> and then that would be that. And we wouldn't even know what was going on in between at all. We didn't know the storylines. We didn't know anything. They didn't tell us anything. <laughs> so when it started getting really meaty towards the end of the series, you know, you'd be sitting there, you'd be doing your lines, and all of a sudden it'd be like, because we'd be watching the picture at the same time, right? And be like, oh, don't. <laughs> and they'd say, uh, Linda, that was your line. <laughs> Sorry about that. Can <laughs> I do it again? Mm -hmm. Did you guys all do an improv conversation with your characters? <laughs> I don't know, but I think that Chris kind of like reminds me of my old boyfriend. Chris talks us, everybody. One of the most important people of the Anime North's entire yeah. world. <laughs> I think he's so dreamy, and I think he'd probably go for me. Oh, Serena, you're crazy. You're always talking about Ray. Just because you're so stupid, you talk to me. Hi, Darian. Oh, excuse me. She went inside. Chris has nothing on me. Okay, guys, good take. Let's do it all again. Can you hear me? Yeah. It, it was on. 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 It yeah. Okay. So yeah, the weirdest uh, voice yeah, yeah. acting thing that happened to me was I got, so a lot of times we audition for things, but then there's also times where you get a direct booking, and that's something where they've obviously heard your tape or whatever, and they just say, yep, that's the guy, come on in. So I get this uh, uh, commercial to do for radio or whatever it is, and I, I, I'm waiting in the uh, waiting room to meet whoever is going to greet me from production, and then they said, okay, we're going to take you in the recording booth. I'm like, oh, great, that's great. And I love direct booking, but it's also nice to know what you're doing. So I didn't see any script, and I don't know why I'm there. And then he starts to get a little nervous, and juggler starts to pump a little bit. He's like, I don't know, maybe it's like a lot of text, and I won't do well, so I don't know. And I turned to the guy and said, so, uh, um, what, what am I doing? He said, ah, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. And we're walking through this, like, maze of production. 
like, no, no, I, I, ha, 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 I'm just trying to, you know, small talk. And I'm trying to, like, bleed from it, like, what, what am I going to say? Like, what am I doing here? He goes, don't worry, you're going to be good. I go, okay. So then I, when I open the door, I get into the side of the booth and put in the headphones, and there's that glass, and there's people like, hi, how you doing? Hey, Toby, how you doing, buddy? I'm good, good. Uh, so, guys, what am I doing? As, oh, it's really easy. It's really easy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, is this like a hidden camera show? What is this? So then finally, it was for some, you know, bank commercial or whatever, and all they needed to have me say was the word for. And I'm like, I'm like, are you kidding me? I said, yeah, all you need to say is for. Like, no way. Yep. Okay, and go for it. Like this. For. And, yep, that's great, man. Thanks so much. <laughs> Okay, we have signed a contract. Ah, it's legal. <laughs> and that was, I said one word, and that was a job. So that's my craziest voiceover story. Uh, I had a situation that was uh, kind of similar. I was very young, just, you know, out of theater school. And my agent said, okay, I have a booking for you. Uh, just go in there on Monday morning. So I arrive, and I say, hello, I'm Susan, and where's my script? And they say, you don't need a script. And um, my heart started going, I don't need a script. What does that mean? Um, so uh, anyway, they said, okay, come on in. And here we were just going to roll this footage. And all you have to do is the sound effects. Uh, <laughs> the sound effects of what? And they said, this. And they start rolling the film. And it, well, it's a porn film. <laughs> That's not my. That's not my thing. Not that I, you know, not that there's anything wrong with somebody who wants to make their living that way. But that's not my thing. And I said, "What do you? What do you mean?" And they said, "We didn't roll any sound while the actress, without her clothes on, was doing the scene. So you're going to be doing the sound that she was making as she was." Doing her thing. And I said. Okay. <laughs> so I just sort of panted a little bit. Can you give us an example, Susan? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. You know what? After that, after hearing myself pant, I never panted again. <laughs> I'm a silent type. So anyway. And, and you were playing the guy in that, weren't you? So. Oh, you were <laughs> She always plays the open I know you're going to make this one for you. So here's the, the best part. The mo as I'm doing these voices or these sounds, they, the camera actually rises up and I see the face of the person who I had not seen because her back was to camera. <laughs> and I knew her. <laughs> You have a little. Story. I have an interesting follow up. <laughs> I bet you know what it is, don't you? You were watching this? Okay, well, yeah, here, years later, when my marriage broke down. <laughs> uh, interestingly enough, uh, I was called in to do sound effects <laughs> on a particular movie. Unbeknownst to me, She'd already been in. <laughs> I did the voice of the big German officer. <laughs> this was the movie was called Ilsa, She Wolf of the SS. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, and now the uh, gentleman, and I used to turn someone this way, uh, who uh, was interacting, shall we say? With us, uh, with Susan's character, that was me. Doing <laughs> the sort of, we'll call it parallel grunting. <laughs> uh, and that was, uh, that was a good story, huh, Susan? Thanks for telling everybody the title of the film. <laughs> I was going to say, why do I get the feeling this is going to be the most downloaded thing? <laughs> You know what, though? I got a call back to do Ilsa Tigress of Siberia. 
There were three. It was a uh, cat. There were three. You know, I can't remember. It was Ilsa, you know, does Dallas or something. Back to Sailor Moon. It's great to digress, isn't it? Yeah. Another question? What, when we got into the studio, everything had already been translated for us. So, as Linda said before, it, it's karaoke for us. We, were, we had to match the lip flaps, but we matched everything to, to the English words that, as they scrolled across in crazy handwriting, too. You couldn't read anything. I don't even know who was writing it, but they were trying to trick us, I think. Um, but because it was like karaoke, um, it, if, if we were saying something like, Okay, we have to go. We have to go right now. It it may have been the lip flap might have been. We have to go right now. But then there'd be three extra lip flaps. So every once in a while, we'd have to improv and, and add a few things here and there. We have to go right now. Come on, let's go. You know, or like some sort of crazy um, improv. I don't know. But yeah. So that's why it seemed also there were times that we were talking so quickly. It was just like blah, 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 getting all these words in, and it seemed like we had so much to say, but it was because the lip flaps were like kept going. You had to go um 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 um. um. <laughs> Another question? Okay. Wait, 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 wait,
And I said, so they said, oh, you got a booking for Sailor Moon. And I said, great, what, what scout am I playing? And they said, Sailor Jupiter. And I said, not, not Sailor Moon? Uh, no, 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 you're not Sailor Moon. <laughs> so, so that was disappointing. But then I went back and I looked at the description of all the Sailor Scouts. And I said, you know what, it's really funny. I gravitated towards Sailor Jupiter the most. And she was the one that I liked the most. And then when you saw us, when we all the actors who were playing the Sailor Scouts, you saw us in the room at that point, And we all kind of looked like... The character that we were playing. So Katie used to have really, really long, dark hair that almost came down to her waist. There's a shot of us recording Sailor Moon um, that we should actually fix up and use a little bit. So we're actually in the middle of recording it one day, and I have, uh, um, believe it or not, this is not my real hair color. So my real hair color is brown, and it was up in a ponytail, and there's Katie with her dark hair down to her waist, and I looked at this photo, and I said, my God, we actually looked... It's, it's eerie. It's, it's as if it was like a little bit of shorthand, which is really good casting. If you have to do something quick and get it done without too much soul searching, it's really nice to have the actress be able to just do it without really thinking. May I add something, uh, an interesting point that you just tweaked? Uh, the producer the, uh, was a French lady, uh, France French uh, lady, and uh, I did a lot of other work for her. Uh, doing live action dubbing from basically French into English. And when she would cast, and so this is no coincidence, uh, when she would cast, she would pick people who looked like the actors on screen. And I, I kept saying, Nicole, why, why do you do that? She said, you know, I won't do her voice, but she... Uh, because you help do it. Because they are more like that, they are more like that people. <laughs> And, you know, she got, for whatever bizarre reason, she obviously knew what she was doing because we got really good performance. And again, just to be more specific, somebody was tall and skinny and had a mustache. There'd be some guy tall and skinny with a mustache uh, doing the English uh, role of the French performer. It's, it was bizarre. Could you explain tuxedo mask? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just good, Linda. Upcoming projects, what are you doing next? Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, uh, there was an um, uh, animated feature called uh, Leafy uh, that was made in Korea that won a bunch of stuff at Cannes, and then it's now called Daisy Ahead in the Wild, and I played the lead duck. It's a uh, mallard duck. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I, that's, that's Mallard, international sign for Mallard. Yeah. Yeah. This is driving, this is Mallard. Uh, and yeah, so I play uh, the lead duck, Willie, and uh, that should be out soon, I guess. Okay. Yeah. I've got, uh, I'm uh, voice directing and cast voice casting two series that are just in the initial stages. Um, can't really divulge, unfortunately. So I could be lying. Because uh, <laughs> I can't give you the names of the companies yet until the the the, uh, the, uh, the shows are really out uh, in the open. But um, yeah, voice cast, voice uh, casting, voice directing two series, and I have a, a role in one of them as well, which is great. I'm doing George of the Jungle right now. Uh, new version of, of George of the Jungle, which is really insane, <laughs> really crazy, and I'm this crazy character called Magnolia, who is a uh, who is a scientist, although not that long ago they said to me, actually, we're thinking she might not actually be a scientist. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That'll really change the read. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty funny though, it's very funny. Um, and I'm working on, I just finished a pilot that I, I guess I can't talk about, but uh, I'm, I'm also working on the reboot of Inspector Gadget. So, uh, it's going to be pretty awesome. I think it's going to be amazing. I, I play Kayla, Penny, I don't know if you remember the original series of Penny, but, um, so at HQ, we've grown up, I guess, am I supposed to talk? I guess we can, because it's going to happen. Um, um, but anyway, everybody's sort of grown up, and we're teenagers, and um, yeah, we're in headquarters, and 
my Penny's best friend. I'm Penny's best friend, Kayla, who's super chatty and crazy. And what Friends does she sound like? Yeah, the cold brain. Really? But you, you, you might not know this. You might not know this. But I don't know if anyone watches Totally Spies, but I play Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Alex has a really high voice up here, and this is sort of in the same vein as I can't do because I have a cold, but Kayla talks like this too, but she talks a mile a minute. So she'll talk like this. Over. You totally love him. You do. Just like that. <laughs> to say my very first fan experience is my most memorable right now. We get a lot of them. Well, first of all, we get a lot. Uh, and there's some that are charming and funny, and then you just go, really? <laughs> like the very first fan that I ever met right here at Anime North. I didn't... Is there another voice coming in? Sounds like another voice coming in on first speaker. Anyways. Uh, oh, I got to Anime North, and I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know whether... Uh, there was going to be rotten fruit thrown at me, or whether people would just go, who? Never heard of her. Never heard of her. So I was like, oh, oh, a little bit nervous, and what am I going to do? Here we go. And I got to the hotel, and this girl came over to me, and she looked at my my pass that said Linda Valentine, and she saw that it had, you know, special guest pass. And she walked over, and she looked at my pass. And then she looked at me. And then she looked back at him. <laughs> <laughs> Linda Valentine. Sailor Moon. Now I've met two Sailor Moons. <laughs> this is going to be a very good weekend. <laughs> she just walked away. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? If this is what it's going to be, awesome! <laughs> So those kind of things are always really great. We also get a lot of people that that really reach out to us because Sailor Moon was so much to it was different for all the different people. What is that? <laughs> I feel like I'm crazy right now. Seriously, hear yourself. Oh, it's just through the wall. I think the doors are open. It's like somebody doing a relaxation. Yeah. <laughs> I know he's in there going. Yeah, that's Sailor Moon. <laughs> but Sailor Moon was so much to so many people, and everybody had something different, which I'm sure all of you guys had. Like everybody, you know, we have so many people say, you were my childhood. And, you know, for us that's like, it just warms the cockles of your heart. You're just like, oh. And there's some people that needed Sailor Moon so much, the series. And they would come forward to us and say, you don't understand. You saved my life. When I was younger and I was watching Sailor Moon, I was in a very dark place. And because of Sailor Moon, that took me out of that place. And I was able to, to get through it. And I, I wouldn't be here today without it. And it, it's so much to us to hear stuff like that and to know that we were there for people like that. Because for us, it was a voice job. It was a job. But to know that it was so much more than that is... It's it's amazing, and that's that's the best thing to hear, really. Those stories. Um, I had, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Well, I just wanted to share a story that 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 happened way back at the beginning too, when we, when we first started appearing at cons. And this was a uh, we had a, a panel just like this, and we were getting ready to leave, and uh, there was this one woman there who uh, who stood back from the group, and. Um, appeared it looked like she was waiting to speak with me but she didn't want to uh, sort of intrude and she wasn't wearing a costume and she was wearing street clothes she didn't really look as if she was at the con to sort of partake or participate and at the very end she came up to me and she was kind of shy and she said I, I just came here because I wanted to thank you and I said well I, I'm so pleased to hear that uh, you're welcome uh, you know what's what's up because at that point she was starting to cry and uh, she said my father wasn't very nice to me and the way she said it I really understood what was going on quite clearly with her father and she said when it would happen 
I would pretend that I was Sailor Jupiter, and I would say to myself, how would Sailor Jupiter get through this? Because Sailor Jupiter is strong, and she's not going to let anybody intimidate her or get her down. So she would pretend that she was Sailor Jupiter, and she would hear my voice in her head, and that helped her get through this whole horrible situation. And I thought to myself, how humbling is that, that my voice, without even knowing it, had an impact on someone else's life. And I was just so grateful that I was in this business. I was so grateful. Uh, I can't tell you. And we, and we all hear stories like this all the time. Not as, that was kind of extreme. But she made it through, and she was standing there to say thanks, you know? So it's, it's kind of an incredible line of work that we're in. I don't know how I'm going to follow after that. <laughs> um, out of all the episodes that you shot, um, what was your favorite like line to say or play or voice? I don't. Rem I mean, I don't remember a specific line. But when I when I think back to everything, Ray was so serious. She was just all business all the time. So as soon as they introduced Chad, I thought better. I, I just, the comic relief, it was just so much fun. So everything to do with Chad and Ray, it, that was kind of my favorite stuff. Um, I liked being drunk. <laughs> <laughs> to this day. <laughs> to this day. Fine. Fine. Uh, no, there was one episode when she gets a little bit tipsy, and then yeah. she starts speaking French. <laughs> which was fantastic because the director that was in the room there was French and I was like really and so we were making up as many words as we possibly could well I was and she's like that's not a word what are you saying <laughs> 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 and then she got a little bit so I love the name drum that was one of my favorite ones for sure that's hilarious meatball head oh well for me favorite episode was uh uh, Destiny, uh, you know, um, episode 30, when they're in the elevator and they have to reveal to each other, it's like, do they or don't they say actually what's going to go down? And that was cool for me because it was like, ah, finally! They, eh, it's like the Lewis and Clark kind of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that would be my event. Uh, the actual line, I can't tell you, it was so long ago. But I know he was told they were going to answer him in that, and that was good for me. <laughs> There were a couple of questions over this side. Oh, sure. <laughs> so it's kind of like hers. Um, when it comes to like everything you've done, what touched you guys the most? Like what spoke to you and you were just like, I don't know, you just got really emotional over it and you just you felt it. Was there anything? When all the Sailor Scouts are lying on the ground dead. <laughs> There's that, and I gotta try and bring them back to life. <laughs> what was it, Moon? Cosmic. Uh, what was it? Moon crisis. Moon crisis power. I think it was Moon crisis power. Yeah. Moon? Moon? That's crisis power. Right. power. Moon crisis power. And they're all lying there. I think moon <laughs> defibrillator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's better at that point. <laughs> but that was pretty cool doing that. That I remember like being really, really, really emotional doing that. And that was also one of those ones where I kept watching and they go, Linda. Come back to us. Do your lines. But it was, it was great to watch. I remember that too, because I remember toward the end, it was very emotional. Everything was coming to a head. We were just, we had done so many episodes. And 99% of those episodes were just screaming. There's all kinds of screaming. We're saving things. We're saving people. But we're screaming. And so when it got to the real core of everything, yeah, I remember mm -hmm. recording. And, and you, as an actor, you really are there. You're right there, and you're all emotional. And I remember leaving the session spent. Mm -hmm. I felt, if it, I do some on-camera stuff, too, and if, if you do any kind of scene where it's emotional or you're crying or it's just, just draining, you leave set spent, exhausted, as if you've gone through, and I have twice, labor, twice. Because it's just this, like, it just takes so much out of you, so I remember feeling that, really, the exhaustion from those scenes, but yeah. 
And sometimes you'd walk in and they'd have already done it, and they'd be like, oh, See you good luck with today. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Yes. If you could pick another character on Sailor Moon, who would you want to be? Except for Sailor Moon, thank you. All right. <laughs> You're going to make me do this, aren't you? <laughs> all right. So the thing is, first of all, normally I would say Jupiter because I'm kind of a sporty girl. I'm like a little bit tough. I don't mind cooking. <laughs> and I hate to say this out loud because it's only going to go straight to her head. But I kind of like the bitchiness of. <laughs> I'm also like a little combination of the two there. So you know, outside of this, we're we're really good friends, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Katie. We're really really good friends. Next question. <laughs> John, would you ever do anything wild, direct, or out of the box? To like throw off the actors? Would I do things to to throw them off? Do I look like that kind of guy? <laughs> And I would disrupt the session just like to get a laugh. <laughs> Please, of course I did. He arrived on set. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I uh, generally, as, as a voice director, I, I like turning to the producer and mocking performers when they're at the script. I won't do it directly to them, but it's like it's like my emotional relief uh, because you know, as a voice director, my, my you know, they get to stand up and they move around and they're in and they're out. I'm there all day, right? Person after person after person after person. And uh, you get a little stir crazy. So you have to find some way, I, 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 and I don't mean to sound cruel, but you've got to find some way to kind of break it up because otherwise you, you, you want to put a gun to your head at some point because it's all, you know, the, the, the energy level is so high. So, um, I mean, I, I, I think the only time I would really intrude in a session, and I still do it to this day, really, is uh, is to make people laugh and to and to sometimes break a serious situation, even if it's a serious scene. Being funny just kind of relaxes people and lets them know that you know what what we do is really wonderful, uh, but let's all remember we're not coming up with a cure for crib death here. This is animation. We're blessed to be in doing something that's, you know, in, in some ways frivolous, although it does have its wonderful serious payoff at times, you know, so we got to keep it light. And uh, that's the only time I will kind of interfere or intrude in a session. You basically take your pants off, John. pants <laughs> off. Yeah, well, but I don't face you. <laughs> Which is worse. Which is worse. Who's your favorite villain and why? Luna. Luna. <laughs> Zoysite. Yeah. 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 Throws glass. <laughs> it hurts. I was going to say Zoysite too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, He's got wicked rock hair too. Yeah. yeah. I guarantee you throw that guy a guitar. <laughs> Keep doing it. <laughs> or actually, a friend of mine, Lion Smith, played Sapphire. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so that was a good one too. But I'm, I'm Everything went red about you, huh? What's that? Mars, red, sapphire, red. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Sapphire. Sapphire's not red. Right. 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 I'm color blind, stupid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the joke's on you, Katie. <laughs> 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 I'll just go to sleep. Oops. What are some of the weirdest things that have happened while recording to their moon? Mm. Uh, I can answer. I mean, just the, the, you know, when it was done. Remember, we we did it over twenty years ago now, and it was uh, well before uh, the uh, this one era of wonderful technology was upon us. And we would wait for elements to arrive at the studio, and it caused no end of disruption because we would get. Um, We'd be waiting for del actual physical delivery of materials, and they'd be coming by purolator. And our producer would be, you know, going a little nutty because she had uh, she had deadlines. And <laughs> part of it would come, and, and something else wouldn't come with it, and it would be coming from another because we had we had a, a video, uh, we had an uh, we had the what was called the rhythm 
van track, which was actually what every all of the performers would read, and they were run simultaneously so that you could match the lips. That's the way they were. That's the way they were uh, assembled. Uh, and sometimes we'd have incorrect material. Sometimes the script would be wrong. I mean, it was just. It, it could it, it could almost be nightmarish at times. It's amazing, truly, that the series got done because it <laughs> was just fraught with all this craziness and panic, and it was frantic half the time. And calling people in and uh, for like you come in I, I sometimes come in and do three lines of, because they you know something been left out. And how did you how did it get left out? Well, somebody lost a page or or something. Or it was crazy. One of the other things that was kind of funny about doing Sailor Moon was any um, any eye movements or like if somebody said what is, they wanted us to make a sound for everything just in case they needed it, but they didn't know if they needed it or not, so just do it anyways. So you got to the point where like every time Sailor Moon would lift up an eyebrow or something, like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you're constantly doing those noises. And I would go home and we'd be sitting around the dinner table and. <laughs> My daughters would say, I don't want to eat this, and I go, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and they say, I don't like this, ooh. <laughs> and I was constantly doing this, I couldn't stop. It was driving the family crazy, it was driving me crazy, but I couldn't stop doing it. <laughs> the Haas were, were, were the most fun, though. The what? The, 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 uh, huh? the, the yeah. Huh? All, uh, yeah, so that comes up anytime the, uh, the, the they don't know how to translate something. They don't really know what the lip flap means. They don't really know what to do. They'll write hum. So you you know you're saying your line. You know, well I think this is really great and it would be really nice. Huh? 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 Yeah. And it just out of nowhere because the lip flap matches the word huh. So the, if you listen, you'll hear. Uh, Powerful amount of haunts that don't really have anything to do with the plot whatsoever. It's just it's kind of like filler. You know what? We have about two minutes left, so let's uh, let's see if there's any more questions from someone who hasn't asked. Someone who hasn't. How did you feel about Sailor Moon says and need for educational content in cartoons at that time? That's a great ah. question. Did everybody hear about how did we feel about the Sailor Moon says? and the need for educational content in the show as it was in North America. You should, you should ask, because I didn't have to do Sailor Moon Sesame. It was done by the time I started, I believe. But they stopped doing it? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, how do you feel about it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember it was on the heels of G.I. Joe, wasn't it? And knowing who's out the battle, it was always that kind of thing. There was that last bit of message. I don't know. I think for the time it was probably correct, uh, but then they realized that maybe they should hold off and maybe less on the Mr. T kind of thing going on there. And didn't they also do it to fill in some time? They just did it to fill in time because they had cut so much stuff that very often they were short. Uh, is that my taxi? <laughs> <laughs> so very often, Guys are ready. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were short, so they, they, uh, they came up with this idea. To, uh, to fill in the time at the end. And I must admit, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, that's kind of cheesy. And all it would be doing would be lifting, of course, segments, sentences from the episode that had just been shown, and they would just sort of wrap it up into some sort of moral statement. Um, I wasn't crazy about it, and I, 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 I honestly didn't know that they did away with it. I think we it. did some of them, but I, I can't even remember. Okay. To the, edge of the whole educational thing, was just starting then. It was at, at that time they were just starting to bring in uh, educators and psychologists and finding out the effects of different whatever on children and what ages. Today you can't do anything without a bank of people surveying every script and every nuance of every character's delivery. It's unbelievable now, and I, because we're we're in an era of total political correctness. Uh, that's that's why cartoons don't have that same kind of. They've lost that element of just being somewhat carefree and purely entertaining, because always. Well, always, the last one was uh, Sailor Moon says, "Don't lick outlets." I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should just hold off. I think that's common knowledge. <laughs> One last great question to round up a wonderful panel with you guys. Who's it going to be? Who's going to pay me? Come on. Nobody back there. <laughs> um, 
Or if, you, if you actually were tuxedo mask, uh, which scale of self would be chosen? Yourself? Oh, man. Oh. 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 You know I have to spend the whole weekend with these guys? <laughs> I gave you five dollars. Um, <laughs> Here we are. Don't look at me, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to look at you, so. Mm -hmm. Linda. Oh, ours. Oh. Oh. <laughs> did you see what you did? You're a dirty dog. So <laughs> <laughs> not seeing you this weekend. Thanks for coming to our very last.